Many of us grew up watching 106 and Park Top 10 Live on the BET Network. It was a 90-minute music countdown show that premiered in September 2000 and ran for 13 more years. It featured interviews, performances, music videos, and competitions in front of a live studio audience. 106 and Park was a hit in black households and took the number one spot as the highest rated music program in North America with around 600,000 views every episode, beating out its competitor TRL over on MTV. The show jump-started a lot of career of budding hip-hop and R&B artists who made their television debuts right there. 106 and Park had some of the most memorable black music moments and in interviews that are still talked about till this day. Here are 106 and Park's most scandalous moments. Besides the interviews and music videos, people specifically tuned into 106 and Park for the unpredictable live performances that could include anything from surprise guest appearances, grand entrances, and embarrassing moments. Take for example, B5's debut performance of All I Do. Listen. And I can't wait to get to school each day and wait for you to pass my But they weren't the only ones to tank during their first performance on 106 and Park. In 2006, newcomer Cassie appeared on the show to promote her hit debut single, Me and You. But her awkward performance would end up receiving a storm of criticism and made headlines for her lack of energy and vocal talent. The bad press forced Diddy to release a public statement to MTV that read, She had her first television performance, and she had an alright performance. You could hear the nervousness in her voice. And to be honest, I kind of smiled at it, because it made me really appreciate what I really love about her. She's a regular person, and we as artists, we sometimes get nervous. I told her it's like riding a bike. You're gonna fall down. You gotta keep on getting up. I'm with her through her development, and I have no question on her singing ability. It just made me appreciate that she got nervous, and it was kind of cute to me, to be honest. Some people are gonna have good days and bad days days. The thing about Bad Boy is, we're with our artists through all days. She's not an artist that has a problem with her vocals or singing. You've got to understand that success for her is coming out of nowhere. It's just so huge and sometimes everybody handles it differently. So I'm quite sure she'll get over it. I don't care how many performances it is. I'm gonna be with her until she gets it right. Cassie also addressed it on her MySpace page, saying, I'm aware that my live performances have been pretty bad. No excuses. I'm still getting over stage fright. I am very upset with a series of events this week, and I do not appreciate people making me look and sound crazy. I'm a 19-year-old girl. I'm single, and I'm working my ass off. But one of the most talked about live performances on 106 and Park is Destiny's Child's performance of Soldier, where Michelle took a tumble. Back in November 2004, the group appeared on 106 and Park to promote the new single. Right as the performance begins, Michelle loses her footing and falls to the ground, but immediately stands up and jumps right back into the choreography as the audience looked on in silence. Then she removes her heel and continues the performance. This embarrassing incident would be joked about and memed non-stop for years. She later revealed that the public humiliation caused her so much PTSD that it took her 13 years to rewatch the performance. But now she's able to laugh it off. 
And I can't talk about memorable 106 and Park performances without mentioning Jenny Wine's over-the-top performance of Pony, as if this was his Super Bowl halftime performance. It first started out with the show's host Free and AJ introducing the R&B singer's performance, but they said something had happened to him backstage. And that's when Jenny Wine was wheeled out on the stage on a stretcher to start his performance that was packed with choreography and theatrics. They said he passed out or something. Yo, what's wrong yo. with him? It's pumped his heart and it'll bring him back, yo. Freestyle Friday was another popular segment on 106 and Park where aspiring rappers would compete in a freestyle battle. A lot of talent gained exposure from the segment and landed deals outside of the show. The most notable contestant is Blind Fury, who was born with multiple birth defects and is obviously blind. He appeared on MTV's Rockefeller MC Battle Live back in 2003 before making his way to 106 and Park where he became the undefeated rap battle champion. Representing whackness to the fullest, boy, you stupid. All my music make dogs get ruthless. Dropping the graffiti, you catching exclusives. Drop the deuces, kind of like breezy. It ain't easy to beat a boy Fury on TV. I make you wonder, you should have picked the perfect rhyme. Listen, I'm about to show you where the blind jokes get you. I promise it's about to feel like a cyclone hits you. You call yourself K9, I'm a beast. Grinding your teeth and your rhyme in this week. You're trying to be G. Keep that neutral. Change your name from K9 to Dog Doodle. I do it too. But there were times when the battles got heated and even physical. During an episode taping in 2011, contestants Blessed and Gohard Jetson went head to head in a final round of the battle. But Gohard Jetson started intimidating reigning champ Blessed during his turn and Roxy tried to intervene. He eventually slaps his hat off his head and this escalated into a physical altercation with Blessed throwing his mic at Jetson, then picking him up and slamming him to the ground. Security managed to break up the fight and ejects Jetson from the studio. Roxy and rapper Game announced after the commercial break that both contestants were disqualified. This was a devastating blow for Blessed, who was two battles away from winning, and he spoke about the situation in an interview with Blue Collar TV. After round one, Duke was mad, you know what I mean? Whole crowd was sure feeling me. I already had the battle in the bag. I was in the zone, you know what I mean? No cocky shit. When I'm winning, I'm winning, you know what I mean? Just like anybody knows when they win, they winning. Yeah. So, first of all, there's rules to 106 and Park. They give you the rules right before the battle. And I mean, it's just common sense. You're not supposed to put your hands on nobody during any battle. During any battle, you're not supposed to touch. You know what I mean? Even if it's a little tap. That's supposed to be an automatic disqualification. I wasn't looking for a disqualification. I was looking for the win because I already was winning. After round one, everybody said I already won. But, you know, there's two rounds. So, after round one, I was, you know, cool, calm, and collective. He had touched me once, and I'm like, for the sake of the show, I'm not going to wild out over it. You know what I mean? So, Roxy, round two starts, and um, he spits a whole bunch of garbage. But me, I'm cool, calm, laid back, just waiting for my round to go. So, bang, they throw on the... Um, Ambitions of a rider, the pop beat for you for those who are familiar with that. They start playing that beat for me. So bang, I start going in round two, round two. I'm killing them. Now, listen to this, y'all. Tell me what am I supposed to do? You be me now. Put walk in my shoes. Homeboy, while I'm rhyming, yells in my face. Ah, ah, making all these point being now, he's yelling in my face. He's coming close to me while I'm rapping and trying to lunge his body on me. Like, you know what I mean? So I stand there smiling at him, you know what I mean? Doing, doing what I do. He knocks my hat off. We from the Bronx, y'all. Violation. New York City, you knock your hat off. What you supposed to do? <laughs> For sake of the show, I still don't do nothing. Wow. I still don't do nothing. I keep rhyming. I keep rhyming. I was like, you know what? Outside, I'll find him out. Now, tell me what I'm supposed to do after this. Homeboy pushes me to the point where I fall off the stage. So I hit him with the boom. But the thing is that when he pushed me, he thought he was gaining points. So he's smiling at game this way. I'm over here. Look, 
boom. And then he's already getting rushed. Hit him with the UFC slam, boom. And then security came, rushed the scene, got him up out of there, took him to the back. And that's why I got to see the footage. I got to see what I did. So the director of the show called me on a few occasions and said, I'm fighting to bring you back on the show. The other dude is banned forever. It's a technicality, right? Yeah. Now, uh, he was supposed to, everybody that was there, I'm talking about from cameramen to security to the director of the show, to Roxy actually came to the black, like, like, bless baby, you all right? You good? Like, that wasn't your fault. You, you handled yours. That made me feel good. I was just like, you right, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but, but my whole thing is they, there's rules to the battle. Why weren't the rules enforced once they seen them provoking me, you understand? Yeah. I read, I think the touch, the yelling, the hat slip, I think that was enough for me to get it on. Speaking of rap battles on 106 and Park, I think most of us remember the Kanye West versus 50 Cent, the Clash of the Titans special on the show. In September 2007, the two biggest names in hip hop, Kanye West and 50 Cent, were set to release their highly anticipated albums on the same day, leading to a public competition and debate over whose album would sell the most. Both rappers welcomed friendly competition and did interviews expressing their love for one another. And BET decided to cash in on the hype with a special episode where they both performed and did a joint interview. This episode gave 106 and Park their second highest viewership behind their Aaliyah tribute episode. And in the end, Kanye's graduation album debuted at number one with nearly a million copies sold in the first week in the United States alone, while 50's Curtis album debuted at number two, selling nearly 700,000 copies in its first week. There were times when celebrity guests got spicy with the show's hosts. Still in the studio working on music too? Aren't I always in the studio working on music that nobody buys? So, um... Oh, wow. I am on my fifth... You bought it? That... You just saying that because you're on camera. But some of these times, things got really heated or out of control. In October 2011, rapper Webby was a guest judge for the Freestyle Friday segment and was also there to promote his new album, Savage Life 3. Everything seemed to be going well and he and Roxy even posed for some pics. But after the commercial break, Webby was nowhere to be found. And by the end of the show, host Terrence J announced that he was no longer welcome to the show without giving any explanation. Judges Jake Diwali for coming on the show. We would, we would not like to thank Lil Webby, who is now banned from coming on the show. We will not be seeing him on 106 Park anymore. Uh, thank you once again to all. Rumors started circling social media about his absence, but according to Webby, it was because Terrence was jealous of his interaction with Roxy. He then did a series of interviews threatening Terrence and making disparaging comments about both of the hosts. Shout out to Terrence, baby. BET, I love y'all, baby. I am BET. I am black entertainment, baby. How can you tell me I'm not? I am BET. Look at you looking at BET right now. So Terrence, I'm sorry your wanted me to put that on her, man. Get your fool, man. Next day, you know, he come on TV. Hey, Webby is banded off TV for BET. I'm beating that dude up, man. So y'all better keep that away from me, man. Who you gonna beat up? They already know. I'm whooping that nigga. <laughs> he hold up. Look, he, he, he like this here. He on the way the other side of the room. Uh -huh. So you know how they act when he, he do like this here. <laughs> so I, I know I guess that hurt his heart. You ain't lying. What you, what you told him? What, I, I, know, I, know, I know what he told him after that. Get your <laughs> man. Get but Roxy went on record to say that Webby was sexually harassing her in between commercial breaks and it made her uncomfortable. She also says his manager called her to apologize. She spoke about the situation with NBC's Peter Bailey in an interview. What exactly happened? It's really sad that it was taken uh, to the extreme that it, not to the extreme, excuse me, but it was uh, the way it was looked upon and it's like, oh, 
you know, you he was banned. And yeah. I think that any light, you have sisters, cousins, aunts, yeah. your mother. I love her. You know, love um, and any light that a woman feels that she was disrespected. Yeah. And, and I get, I have thick skin. I don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But when you're at your job, and somebody sexually harasses you yeah. in a manner that is very vulgar and disgusting. Yeah. You know, I have no shame of sticking up for myself and telling you that you're improper right now. I'm at work, we're in a set, there's children around us, you know? You're, you're really out of line right now. And um, I think that people should more so applaud a woman sticking up for herself and the people around her for sticking up for herself than allowing that kind of behavior to happen. And I think that we allow that behavior to happen too much in our society, yeah. and we don't put light on people being inappropriate. And, and it's okay, ladies, to speak up and say, no, I don't like to be spoken to in that manner, you know? And I respect myself, and, and I respect others, and I treated him. But that would definitely not be the last time guests got into it with hosts. In April 2014, up-and-coming R&B singer August Alsina stopped by the show to promote his debut album, Testimony, that dropped that week. Everything was going great until co-host Keisha Shante asked him if there was any possibility of him and Trey Song squashing their beef and collaborating again in the future. For reference, the two singers were friends and had appeared together on the remix of August's song, I Love This. But something happened between the two that led to a falling out. During the press run for the album, August made the announcement of the falling out and was getting a lot of questions about Trey. But when it came to 106 and Park, he told producers the topic was off limits. And he became irate when Keisha asked him about it. You did our New Year's Eve bash. Yeah. You came on the stage, you killed the stage, you brought Trey songs out as your guest. You got The girls were going crazy. So I have to ask you, is there any chance that two talented brothers will bury the hatchet? So you're just going to go against the grain <laughs> and go against everything that I, I just I just told y'all not to ask me that shit when I got up in here. Okay. Well, I think, uh, fair, I think the, the girls want to know. Testimony and coming to, out, baby. You spoke <laughs> to radio. I remember stories. You've spoken, on the, you've spoken on radio stations and blogs and you're on the show. So fans want to know, and I'm just asking you what fans want to know. That's it. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. I won't. All right, we move on. There it is. There the you boy go. said testimony is in stores, man. Now, I'm a Former 106 and Park co-host Roxy Diaz took to Twitter to call him out in a series of tweets that read, Let me go on record and say Keisha Shante did her job as a journalist. Any other radio or TV personality or blogger would have asked too. To even applaud how she was responded to is what's wrong with our generation today. Also, that language on 106 and Park is not even necessary. After the backlash, he appeared on Sway in the Morning saying he felt played and was being made to look like the bad guy but eventually admitted fault in his response. You know mm -hmm. what, uh, what you said, you told somebody not to ask you a question. Yeah, I was played, man. Yeah. And it wasn't like, you. It, here's the thing. I look like the bad guy right yeah. now because, yeah. because of how I've been portrayed. Yeah. And <clears throat> really people don't know and like don't play with me. Yeah. And like don't, lead me to believe something that is not. Mm -hmm. If you tell me we ain't gonna talk about this because I ask you, it's, you, you lied right to my face. Yeah. Mm. So don't blindside me. So you was mean to that girl. I wasn't mean. Then here's the thing, people get honesty and mean mixed up nowadays. I mean, I go through it a lot, so I know where you coming from. And but you didn't have to curse at her. I, yeah, you could say that now, but if you put me in a position, that's how I felt, and which is exactly I went back to BT mm. yesterday. Yesterday, and uh, that's exactly what I said. I mean, she she was like, I I don't uh, I didn't mean to disrespect you, and I was like, well, it wasn't my intentions to disrespect you. So there was a convo. Yeah, it was a conversation. Okay. But the thing was, uh, you know, before this conversation. I felt how I felt, mm. and I, you know, spoke on how I felt, and I don't take back nothing that I said. That so, so, did you have a conversation with her? And you specifically told her not to ask you that. Yeah, my whole, my whole squad. But you know what, though, what, what I'm I, I now, mm. it's your fault, though. You know, this is all your fault. Why, why so? <laughs> because you're the one that went public with your friction with Trey Holmes. I mean, 
Honest. If you would have never honest. come out and said nothing, <laughs> you said you like honest. Yeah. He's being honest. No, nobody would have never known. They but never known you know nothing. what though? As I, it's all a part of me, um, me growing. Uh, Viewers of 106 and Park also got to witness hosts having falling outs live on air. During a taping in summer 2008, Terrence J repeatedly poked fun at Roxy throughout the episode and even made a comment about her body. Roxy, who brushed off his comments at first, eventually stormed off stage once she had had enough, forcing Terrence to finish the show on his own. But he still continued to throw jabs at her. What? It's not that bad, but it's not that good. Uh, we listen, got we got a new history making. That's my read, if you can't tell. A new history making number one video. You do your read over there, and I'm in the the not. I'm in the good zone. That's over how here. you feel today. Yeah, I mean, it's, I didn't do it. You did. Uh, look, we got more 106 of Park on the way. Let's get these breath mints. Right back. Yeah. Yo, why can't you have a body more like Sierra's, y'all? Did y'all, fellas, did y'all see us? Yo. Why can't you have a body more like Nelly? True story. It's your turn. <laughs> Remember, don't miss Nas next week on one. I do 106. have a body like... He'll stop by and discuss his very controversial new album. Next Friday, we're having auditions for Freestyle Friday. Now, for more information... Uh, let me give them the email address. The email address is freestylefriday at gmail.com. Put it on the bottom of the screen. It should be on the bottom. Of the... Yeah, there it goes. Freestylefriday at gmail.com. I just wanted to help you before you messed it up. I had it. I just in case you just want to mess it up. Freestylefriday, gmail.com. Make sure to hit us up. And you know what you got to do with that. All the best MCs in the country, you make sure to get at us right now. We're holding auditions in New York City. It's going to be off the hook, all right? Roxy won't be there. She won't mess you up while you're doing your thing. It's like that today, really? You're really feeling some type of way. No, I'm just like, no, I'm just. Real talk. Nah, it's good. It's going go down. Go Rick Ross, yeah. Nelly, here I am. It's number two on the countdown, baby. Here I go. Let's do this. Some real big things right there. That video hit. Oh my bad. Yo, come up here, yo. I need a co-host or somebody. Hey, come here. You gonna be my new co-host right now? What's your name? Gabrielle. Where are you from? I'm from Hempstead. Hempstead. Give it up for her from Hempstead. Was I too hard on Roxy? Huh? I wasn't too hard on her, right? No. No. See, I was just playing around. So look, you're gonna be. I know you're gonna be my co-host, and some people want to act too sensitive with their jobs, all right? So we're gonna get into the number one video in the world right now. This joint hit number one. Nobody really knows what caused the tension between the hosts, but they were rumored to be dating behind the scenes. Roxy took some time off from the show, and they eventually moved past the situation and never mentioned it after. Aside from all the chaos, there were many somber moments on 106 and Park, from Aaliyah's tribute episode to the announcement of Michael Jackson's death. Welcome back to the show, it's BT's 106 and Park. According to the LA Times, Michael Jackson has been pronounced dead. We lost two great American icons today. Hollywood's own starlet, Farrah Fawcett, one of the original Charlie's Angels, and now one of the world's most loved and greatest pop stars that we will probably ever know in our whole entire lifetime. There, there are still conflicting reports. Some of the news sources say he's in a coma, so, uh -huh. so I'm just... Michael Jackson has been confirmed. He has passed away, guys. N Latoya Luckett, not anymore in the number seven number video. Number seven video. And AJ and Free's unexpected departure from the show. They were the original hosts and appeared in hundreds of episodes and BET specials for five years. But by July 2005, their relationships with BET's executives had soured behind the scenes. Free Marie eventually stopped appearing in episodes that summer, and AJ was left to either host alone or with a celebrity guest. Then on July 28th, AJ tearfully announced that he and Free would not be going forward with the show. <laughs> I, I'm on the phone right now with Free. There's a lot going on over here at 106 and Park. I'm, I got her on the phone to help me from getting emotional. Um, I want everybody to know out there, this is my last live show on 106 and Park. And Free's gone as well. And, uh, uh, man, me and Free wanted you all to know that we love y'all very much. 
have a video fully breaking down what went on behind the scenes and the fallout. But it was basically due to new management at the show and the executives' refusal to renegotiate their contracts. Fans of the show were left devastated and even started a petition calling for their return. But the two original hosts never came back, and we can all agree that 106 and Park was never the same after Free and AJ's resignations. The show was still doing good for a few years, but it eventually went downhill in every way possible. And this brings me to the moment that led to the show's demise. On an episode in August 2014, guest host Karuchi Tran read a tasteless joke about Beyonce and Jay-Z's daughter Blue Ivy's hypothetical thoughts during MTV's Video Music Awards that took place over the weekend. The top six things Blue Ivy thought about the VMAs with number six. I really did wake up like this because my parents never comb my hair. Oh, uh, uh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> this caused intense backlash towards both BET and Karuchi, who says the producers made her read what was on the teleprompter. She took to Twitter after the show to tweet, Now you all know I love me some Beyonce and Blue Ivy. BET's president of music programming and specials, Stephen Hill, publicly apologized on Twitter and expressed his regret for the show putting Karuchi in that position. He also said the network privately apologized to Beyonce and Jay-Z. BET suspended the producer who wrote the joke, and not too long after, 106 and Park was canceled for good. What were your most memorable moments of 106 and Park? And also, how would you rank these scandalous moments? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to BFTV for more content.